Hello and welcome to Vegas Aces. I'm your host, Heather Ferris, and today we have a guest joining us. So, uh, William. Hi, William. Hello, Heather. How are you? It is nice to see you again. It's so good to see you again. Now, uh, William is a floor supervisor at, in Canada. Uh, now, you, in fact, you are probably going to do a much better job at uh, introducing yourself than I am. Mm -hmm. So, uh, <laughs> hello. I'm so sorry about my phone. Uh, my You're alarm. okay. My alarm. <laughs> my alarm. <laughs> Sorry. Um, so my name is William. Um, I'm a table games floor manager in one casino in Canada, located in Vancouver. Um, I've been in the industry for over 13 years. Um, I started in Colombia, and then I worked for a cruise ship company. Uh, for many years, and then I worked in Toronto, and right now I'm located in Vancouver. I got transferred because of the promotion. <laughs> okay, well, congratulations on the promotion. Thank you. You're welcome. And today we are going to be talking about uh, player beliefs and cultural differences. And I'm really excited to talk with you about this because in Las Vegas, you see a lot of that. And it's it's one of those topics that is um, very interesting to me. I, I love this topic. So I'm really yeah. excited. So it is really important that as uh, casino staff members, we are aware or of all of these beliefs and and little things that can improve the guest experience or it will make our job so much easier. Yeah. But but it's important to understand also these kind of different beliefs and traditions because sometimes those beliefs become traditions. Uh, so yeah, we're going to talk about uh, the Asian culture, the Asian culture, mm -hmm. that is also a few points that I want to talk about, but I'm going to start with the Asian culture, all right? So, for example, it is believed, and I actually, I had a conversation with one person, uh, with a nation person, and this person told me about not touching their, their shoulders or upper back because they feel that they're like draining the luck from them. That was very particular. Um, also, I was, uh, when talking to this person, that person told me never carry a book into the pit or where the, this person is playing. The work for book in their language is very similar to loose. Oh, so if you bring a book into the pit, it's a matter of like, it symbolizes losing money. Exactly. It's like the gotcha. number four, number four. We yes. know, yeah, we know the number four. Why the back our tables, they don't have number four. Nope. Exactly. Um, because and <laughs> because go ahead because it means a death in the yes. language so yeah. the way that they say number four it sounds sim similar to death so they associate it with death yes but it's also really interesting too because they take four out which means they have an extra space so we have eight come in and eight is actually one of the luckiest numbers uh, for the Asian culture. And you'll yeah. see people actually fighting to sit on that spot. It, yes. And it is very important uh, for supervisors not to, well, sometimes you need to pass information, but be very tactful and very discreet because even when they hear this number, it's like mm, it's like a red flag for them. 
Yeah, you, you don't want to give a nation uh, player, let's say, a player's card that starts with like four, four, four or something like that. You, they will go crazy and leave immediately. Exactly. And I'm going to relate this example, especially with the craps table. For example, when you say like, oh, seven and they are in the middle of the row. Yeah, you don't want to do that because no. people get in their mind that you are the one responsible of that. If they yeah, pe people get very, very upset. And then as soon as the seven comes out, you're the reason why Ex that seven just came out. Yes, exactly. <laughs> so um, I was going to talk about the number eight, the number eight, because for them is prosperity. For prosperity. So for them is really good luck. It is important to know these kind of situations because you want to avoid the conflicts or you just want to uh, be empathetic with this, uh, with this particular player or players. Also, fun fact, uh, well, another fact, 4 and 14. 14 is also a very um, bad number. Unlucky. 14 as well is, they don't like 14. And if you go in the casino too, um, you'll see that the floors, there's no fourth floor. There's no like fourth, 40th floor. Um, just like there's no 13th floor. Uh, they take exactly. those floors out. And, and the casino in particular with this kind of a strategy is to show them, you, you know, like to show empathy and uh, this way also we kind of like attract more customers um, because if there is one casino that has every time this player goes to that casino and see number four, number three, or, you know, like the, uh, even that customer won't feel very comfortable in that casino. Yeah. And, and just the simply... whole thing, yeah, the whole thing casinos do is they try to make players feel comfortable. And that goes from like the high vaulted ceilings to bright lights to, you know, the sweet sounds, the slots the music. made to... Exactly. Yeah, exactly. They, they put so much time and effort and money into making the, the players feel comfortable. Also, yes. And also, I want to uh, I wanna approach all the um, supervisors and floor managers. Just be very, very open and be very detailed when it comes to the casino. If the music is too loud, please just communicate or turn it uh, down a little bit um the music or of something at the table also um i want to tell you that uh asian people they don't uh they don't play at a table that is close to a washroom yeah or because they, yes they because, feel like their money's going down the drain exactly so Uh, just watch for this part. This is what I have for uh, the Asian culture. And yes. Also too, during, I'm sorry. I, I love, I really love the Asian culture. So I, I, yes. I study it and everything. Um, and it's just something that I find very fascinating. Uh, one of the things that they say about the Lunar New Year is um, you're not supposed to sweep or vacuum for yes. the first day or so so if you're in the pit and you have one of those vacuums that it's not like an electronic vacuum but it's still you know vacuuming yeah, or sweeping vacuum. people might see that as unlucky too because it's this particular day and you're vacuuming up during in the middle of a casino yes yes and it's really important to be to be aware of these kind of situations also because you want to get to know your players right and It is important to be aware of these superstitions or beliefs, cultural beliefs. Um, in the gaming industry, um, we also have different type of uh, beliefs. And I wanted to talk about uh, three in particular and with real life examples. So, for example, a player at the craps table always blows or die. And that's I, so unhygienic. <laughs> I know. Well, right now with COVID? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> right now with COVID? Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. <sighs> But uh, let's talk about before COVID. Let's go back in time a little bit. 
but um, a lot of people, and then uh, I used to, when I used to be a supervisor, um, a box man, I used to, you know, like be by the book, but sometimes you need to be a little bit flexible because if they don't blow their, the dice, for example, um, they don't feel lucky. You know, you have to accommodate a little bit. It's not like you're going to be breaking the rules all the time. It's just no, but it's it's really, it's a hard balance to have because yes. at the same time, they're not supposed to be covering the dais or bringing them up against uh, above the table. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So there are certain policies and procedures for game security and table protection that you want to follow. Um, but it's it's a huge balancing act. Yes, it's, it's just to balance, find the middle point and see that you're not um affecting the game uh security or the game protection of the game of of the table but also you want to kind of accommodate and be very uh good with that understanding thank you i was looking for that word <laughs> um also, so, uh, before we move on to the other one um you were talking about blowing on the dice yeah. um there are so many people where they kiss the dice or if they're on blackjack, they kiss the cut card. And um, this isn't lucky. This is just really disgusting because, oh, yeah. you know, you, you've you seen where people have put their hands and where they put the cut card. And, you know, like I I remember just to give I'm yeah. sorry. No, 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 no. Uh, Go this. ahead. Just to give people a really disgusting example. So cover your ears if you don't want to hear this. I was on blackjack and um, I had this really disgusting guy, sweaty, gross, uh, smelled horrible, like really nasty. And his lucky thing to do with a cut card was put it down his pants. Oh. Yeah. So oh. we don't clean anything uh, in the casino. Like it's just, we don't clean stuff. So he played for a little bit, you know, cut the deck several times and then he left. Um, and I'm like disgusted, of course, washing my hands at, at every break. But um, there's this beautiful woman that came up to the table maybe an hour or two later. And her thing was kissing the cut card. And I'm trying to tell her, please don't do that. You don't oh understand. <laughs> and she got <laughs> really offended and upset with me because I'm, you know, taking away her good luck charm. And I'm trying to tell her this is not a lucky thing. <laughs> oh, my God. No, that's disgusting. Yeah. That's that's disgusting. But oh. um, I mean, right now with COVID, obviously, there are certain things that we are not allowing anymore. Uh, but it's just find a balance and try to align the cultural beliefs and or these uh, rituals that they have. Because we're going to talk about the second one is about like a pendant or the lucky ring or the lucky bracelet. Or the funny hat, because, mm -hmm. you know, it's not sometimes something luxurious and uh, shiny. Sometimes it could be it... a Lego, some a Lego character. We had yeah, yeah. that for one of our guys. He had a little Lego character on his chips, and it was really lucky for him. Yes. Uh, so, but like I said, sometimes they're funny things. They could be funny objects. They could be... <laughs> I have Thank a you. couple examples. Please, please, please. <laughs> uh, two, two examples. Um, one guy came up to the table with a dime bag of um, weed. That oh. was his lucky thing. Um, and I'm trying to tell him, you know, you can't have that on the table. No, no, it's lucky. The second one was um, another one was a dime bag, but this time it was ashes from his father. And he had them. He played them with them on the table because he was playing with his dad. So he had him on his chips and his next to him. And it was just really weird to have like someone's ashes on the table like that. So obviously, oh my God, I cannot imagine like it's a dead body. <laughs> well, <laughs> yes, a dead that person, body. that person, you know, like, no. Yeah. Sometimes it's like, it, it's these kind of objects that uh, for us is, weird and, ex and extremely strange to see but for them is something they believe on or something that is like extension of their body when they go to the casino 
Or it could be their dead father. You never know. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. Um, I'm sorry. What? Go on to number three. No. I'm, I'm actually thinking that one day, one day, <laughs> one day um, you, it was like a funny hat. That one is, it was like a funny hat and everybody was like, what's going on with this player? Like, it's not Christmas, it's not New Year's, it's not like Halloween, it's, what's going on? And he keeps bringing this hat like almost every day. And it was his, after after uh, the manager talked to him and everything like, hey, I like your hat. And that was the way he approached that conversation. And it was basically that if he is not wearing that hat, uh, he won't win money. Yeah. Yeah. So um, what else? The third one, um, if this one is more related to, um, well, it will be like customer service. And it's like, for example, in roulette. When a player in roulette has a a pattern and he how like he knows how to place the chips right, or maybe the player will ask the dealer to place their chips just because it means luck. There are certain things that happens uh, on the cruise ships actually. Mm -hmm. There were a player that um, he was like. I don't want to touch that number. If the dealer bets for me, um, I will win or something like that. Like it was the, or when in Bakra, the dealer is cutting the deck. Yeah. That one is another good example or blackjack. Um, for them, sometimes us, as a staff members, we wear the lucky charm. And but just be careful because uh, because of collision. Yeah, Somet that's yeah. true. Sometimes you need to be just inform your floor supervisor. Uh, what are these kind of requests or what the player is asking for? You as a dealer, and we will we will make the decision if it's if it's convenient if it's um talking about policies and procedure if it's allowed to do that so yes i don't know if you have any story funny story <laughs> <laughs> i do i have a couple um so we had one dealer who it was the same thing it was a player who was like oh this is my lucky dealer and he would always look for her and he would always play at her table and everything mm -hmm. and um you know the management was like okay but they would always keep an eye on him because you know he always had to sit on her table so he one day um was having a really big winning streak and started playing with a lot of money and they thought that she was flashing her whole card to him uh because she was doing the white yeah. swipe and you're not supposed to do the white swipe okay. and we don't know if they were colluding or if he was just like taking advantage of her and that's why she was his favorite dealer you know yeah. so it, it's that it could be that aspect of it as well yes so that way that that's what i said like just be careful but always communicate with your floor manager because uh the first thing if the player has uh a really good luck a really good luck and it's the this player is winning and winning and winning and winning trust me you will have surveillance on you you will have your floor manager or your shift manager next to you and see what's going on. So just be be very aware of those kind of situations. But uh, you, like I said, we need to find that balance and align everything in a way that we are we are always uh, we're always um, being flexible with the player and providing that right. customer experience. Right. But at the and same time, protect, protecting us. It's really hard to do that, too, because on one, on one hand, you're looking for um, 
protecting game security table protection, you're looking to protect the game. But on the other hand, you don't know if this is a luck thing, you know, you don't know if this is like their lucky charm, or this is some kind of belief that they have, and you don't want to uh, ruin the experience for them and have them like not come back. So it's, it's really hard to uh, keep those two balanced. Um, yes. And then the, the second example that I had was, um, we had one player who would only play at a crafts table with a certain floor supervisor. And we found out later that they were roommates um, and they were making counterfeit oh money. And so he would use the counterfeit money at his roommate's table and the roommate would just accept the money, put the money in, give him the chips. He'd play a few hands and then he'd go and cash out the money to uh, launder. Mm -hmm. um, and they didn't know if that was like a, you know, oh, that's his lucky table or whatever. Yeah. It wasn't that. It was, you know, game security table protection. Sometimes, sometimes to find a balance, and I'm going to give you one example, maybe it, it will be very helpful to maybe understand uh, what is the kind of balance that we are looking for. So there is a player, and this player, like you said, he wants to play with just this dealer or he wants to see a certain supervisor, not at a crops table, but maybe at Bakra or any other table. So what, um, what I suggest is you're gonna talk to this player. Yeah, I'm gonna give you this dealer, it's your lucky dealer, but not all the times or next time I can give you this dealer because mm -hmm. that is rotation. It's also the way you approach uh, the conversation uh, that way you kind of find the balance and that and that customer will understand that it's not always that you're going to have the certain dealer or certain supervisor. Mm -hmm. um, another way you could find out too is um, just go up and have a conversation with the, the person, the player, um, you know, ask, don't, don't question them. Like, you know, they're in the inquisition. You don't want to feel like, you know, they don't want to feel like they're in, being interrogated, but go up and be friendly and be like, oh, hey, so like you were saying, I see that cool hat, you know, what's up? Or, you know, tell me a little bit about it. Like, just try to start a conversation with them. And if they're very open and, you know, warm and everything, um, some players will be like really nervous and scared and they won't look at you and they um, are like very shy and, you know, shy away from that. Um, that's the type of suspicious behavior that might alert a floor supervisor to, are they trying something or are they, are they just yes. playing like normal? Exactly. And remember that all the supervisors are there to protect and they are the first line of management and they supposed to be trained for this game mm -hmm. protection and, Please, no basic strategy. Please, please, please. Because uh, when it's, it comes to identify also the cheater or the advantage player, there is a difference between the two of them. So also the cheater could be an internal member. So just be trained, uh, take the tr necessary training Casinos, mm -hmm. please provide the tools and necessary um, material for them to be up to date, but also be very open to accept certain cultural and belie beliefs uh, in a way that, in that way, you will find the balance in both, in both and you're going to um, deliver a great customer experience but at the same time, you're protecting our assets in the yeah. casino, right? Exactly. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> so I don't know if you have any other question. Um, that was mm -hmm. all my points. Your stories were great. I actually, oh, thank you. My God, the, the ashes. <laughs> the ashes <laughs> yeah. one was the best. <laughs> oh, thank you. Well, thank you so much for uh, coming on and sharing your experience. Uh, we really do appreciate it. And I hope we can have you back again in the future to uh, share more. Sure. Anytime. Um, okay. It's it's always a pleasure, Heather. Thank it's you. it's always a pleasure. And you can uh, find me. I'm going to leave my LinkedIn profile. Yes. Yeah, my link. Well, below. 
we'll have it in the show notes below so that way you could just uh click and go directly to his linkedin account perfect if you if want you, to uh talk or if you have any questions you can actually yes. send me a message i will be happy to answer that and also i would like to say if there are uh viewers fans figures they just have stories funny stories with uh things objects or situations <laughs> please or just share weird, weird beliefs people have because people yeah. come up with some weird interesting things exactly so yeah i would like to see that thank you thank you so much <laughs> no, thank you heather again once again cool well um uh, thank you guys so much for watching we do really appreciate this and we will see you again All have right. a great one Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye.